Hello and welcome back to the Alter Your Health podcast, your source of information and inspiration to promote the holistic transformation of your health and the health of our planet. That's what it's all about here on the Alter Your Health podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Benjamin Alter. My last name is Alter, and that's why this podcast is called Alter Your Health, and that's why my business is called Alter Health, and you can learn more about Alter Health the business, the podcast, and so much more at www.alter.health. If it's your first time stopping through, welcome. Nice to meet you. I am a licensed naturopathic doctor, and my mission is to bring healing information and inspiration into this world because I believe that we have plenty of information. There is no shortage of information in this world today but there is a shortage, a deficiency of inspiration. And when we bring information and inspiration together, that intersection is a spark that promotes health and healing. And that's what it's all about. That's why we've got this podcast going. And that's why we have guests like Jeevan Singh, who is actually a dear friend of mine from medical school. And we actually lived together for a year. She was my roommate while I was at the National University of Natural Medicine. Jeevan was in the classical Chinese medicine program. I, of course, was in the naturopathic medical program. I really love Jeevan. She's a dear friend and an amazing human being. And I think that anyone who crosses her paths and spends some time with her would agree with that. She's just got that energy, that aliveness, that that vitality that she brings to her life and to her healing practice. So Jeevan comes from the Sanskrit meaning life, interestingly enough, because that's what she is. And uh, more specifically, Jivana is the Sanskrit term, which means the spark which animates every living being. And that's a name that's quite fitting, as we're talking about, because her life's work is guiding women and people with vaginas back to their sanctuaries of their body to reclaim their birthright of aliveness and embodiment. Jeevan's kind of niche and specialty is working with women and people with vaginas. Just a disclaimer that I don't have a vagina, and I think that this sort of conversation and this sort of information is still really powerful, really important, really empowering so even if you don't have a vagina stay tuned in this is going to be applicable to you in your life absolutely as a visionary womb keeper herbalist doctor and guide jeevan offers work that is experiential and holistic she offers one-on-one sessions and courses on holistic pelvic wellness and embodiment coaching she believes that one of the most radical things we can do for ourselves and the collective is to cultivate self-friendship both on a physical and spiritual level. Jeevan holds a doctorate in East Asian medicine and a master's in integrative mental health. And you can learn more about Jeevan at her website, www.flowerhandwellness.com. And you can check her out on Instagram, at flowerhandwellness. So I'm excited to dive into this conversation where we discuss all sorts of things related to holistic health, truly holistic health. We talk about embodiment. We talk about some of the practices that are hands-on that Jeevan brings. We talk about using your hands as healing tools in your life. Jeevan actually guides us through a process where we are able to use our hands as healing tools. So if you've got a few moments at that point in this conversation to close your eyelids and tune in and channel that healing energy through your hands to your body, take advantage of that. We also talk about abdominal therapies that Jeevan uses in her practice as well as holistic pelvic care to some degree. However, we do have a full episode dedicated to holistic pelvic care with Dr. Susanna, the co-host of this podcast, and that is episode number 82. Anyways, let's dive into this great stuff with our guest, Jeevan Singh. Before we do, I just want to remind you to subscribe, rate, review this podcast. It would mean so much to me. And if it is information and inspiration that you enjoy having in your life and you think that others in your life, friends, family, loved ones, would also enjoy tuning into this sort of information, feel free to share it. I would be so grateful and hopefully they would be grateful as well. So thank you so much and enjoy this truly amazing conversation with our guest, Jeevan Singh. 
welcome Jeevan to the Alter Your Health podcast. Thank you so very much for taking the time to be with me. Mm, it's a pleasure, Ben. I'm really happy to be here with you. Yeah, it's so good to see you again and reconnect. I mean, we've obviously crossed each other's paths so many times and we lived with one another for like a year. So we, you know, we go way back, I guess not way, way back, but like five, six years, whatever it is. Yeah, and it's so Crazy cool how to just see flies. like yeah. trajectories and to see yeah. the way that we're both getting creative with with our practices and how to deliver like holistic health information to people. Yeah, you know, I think that there's always been something to you from like the moment I came across your path and you know, you're you're an interesting person and like have so many different facets that all come together beautifully in this kind of holistic um, you know, approach to how you live and how you, I'm sure you work with your patients and clients now. I think that, you know, similar to you, I think that myself, I, I don't really fit into the box of like a traditional holistic health practitioner. You're, we are kind of alternative, alternative health care practitioners yes. <laughs> on the fringe, so to speak. So uh, I like to have these kind of conversations with people who are um, on the fringe of, uh, you know, not in like a negative way. I think fringe can be seen as negative or positive. And, and I think it's just important to kind of push against the limits and uh, stretch things and expand. And I think that's what you're doing, it sounds like. Thank you so much for reflecting yeah. that, Ben. And it's funny because some of my patients here in Portland have said the same thing of like, wow, I've never met anybody <laughs> like you or anybody doing the work quite in this way. And I think that in a way we get to be visionaries and we get to create what might not have been created yet. And so it's really exciting to um, see the way that you and Suze are also Dr. Seuss, <laughs> the Dr. Alters, um, that you both are, yeah, being really creative and inspiring with your practice. Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, I, I was really on a conventional route for a long time, you know, gearing to myself to get into conventional medical school and everything. And obviously, I know that all routes can lead to different trajectories and different places, but um, I think that you know, the foundational education that we've kind of received have supported us in being creative entrepreneurs and forging our own paths and destinies. So I'm really, you know, looking forward to diving in to hear more about what your path and destiny is looking like in the in this current moment, at least. And, um, and uh, I'd like to maybe just start in, you know, going back a little bit, what brought you into your studies of uh, classical Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Yeah, you know, it really, looking back over my 20s, I remember that when anybody asked, like, what do you want to do in your life? I would always say, oh, well, you know, this lifetime, I'll probably be a poet and teach English in a college or something. But next lifetime, I really want to be a natural medicine physician. Um, my grandfather, my dad's from India, and his dad had a strong interest in Ayurvedic medicine and was often like making herbal formulas and keeping journals where he would like track like medical information. Um, so it's kind of cool to just think about where in my lineage has had this desire to um, do holistic healing and then the ways that it has been able to express or not express. Um, he was a tailor by trade, and so he never, like, was able to be a doctor full time. Oh, so he was just kind of like a, a lay person, medicine man, of some exactly. sort. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure if he did any training under a teacher or not, but he was a well-known meditation teacher that people from all over North India would come and sit with him, and so. I feel like from a young age could see the connection between spirituality and healing our physical bodies and that the two are completely intertwined. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to my Saturn return and I was 29 and going through the thick of it and I had been held up twice at gunpoint and then um, 
And then after the second incident, and those happened within a three year period, they're kind of like bookmarked this period of my life of deep wow. healing and deep exploration. And right after the second one, a few weeks later, I was in a rollover accident. And so that accident is like this metaphor for my life of everything getting turned upside down and whatever, wherever I thought I was going, whatever trajectory, you know, I was looking at um, creative writing programs and being like a college professor and whatever that was, it was like the universe picked me up and was like, is that really what you want to do? Like, this is your life, you know, you're talking about this other life and maybe this is your this is your second life right now. Hmm. And so I really sat with that information and went through some really deep, yeah, deep questioning of like, what am I here to do? And it was just like, yeah, I, I had a vision of these porcupine needles and a healer was like, oh, you have like acupuncture, your ancestors did acupuncture in South America, because my mom's half South American. And it was like something clicked and I was like, oh yeah, yes, that's what I want to do. And I've never, as soon as I made that decision to like, to, you can hear my cat. <laughs> Usually it's my cat in the background. So. Oh good, maybe they'll meow to each other. <laughs> yeah, mine's out the, out the other side of the door, but. It's so cute. Yeah, as soon as that, as soon as that like hit, I feel like it was like I was picked up off the tracks of one um, journey and then like just placed on these other tracks that have felt so right and so yeah so in alignment where with where I need to be so that's how I got yeah. here what a, yeah I didn't know any of that story I think I maybe have heard the gun help being held up at gunpoint story or yeah, I didn't I know it happened I might have shared that. Mm -hmm. but uh but wow like yeah I really can appreciate the metaphor of just being flipped upside down and shaken up and and uh at that like at that point in your life were you doubting or uh like questioning your path or were you or was the universe just intervening as it does both I was like <laughs> who am I what am I okay. doing and Saturn then return like, yeah totally yeah. it was yeah. just like this and I was like oh yeah okay <laughs> Yeah, amazing. So, and how did you land in Chinese medicine focused land, you know, because there's so many routes and paths you can take to into holistic health. So what, what was that like for you choosing? Or was it chosen so, for you? <laughs> sure, that's such a good question, Ben. And I feel like, um, you know, it's funny because it didn't cross my mind to study like Ayurvedic medicine. And I think I felt like, okay, if I'm going to do this, like, I want to have a license, I want to be able to bill insurance, which I don't presently do. Um, but I just felt like I wanted to really, like, go fully, step fully into it. And so I had an acupuncturist at the time who said that NUNM and CNM back then um, had a Chinese medicine program that was more uh, spirit-based and more just heart-centered than the other medical school in Portland, which was more clinical. And I felt like I wanted to stay in Portland. I'd been here. That was Ocom? Ocom. Mm -hmm. yeah. She had gone to Ocom. And she's like, if I could have done it all over again, I would have gone to NCNM and had a more, um, yeah, just a more like heart-focused, heart-centered education. So I looked at the program and it just like really spoke to who I am as somebody who is a poet and a musician and um, a traveler and somebody who's really curious about the world. It, I feel like it even said like ancient Chinese physicians were scholars and they were um, doctors and they were artists. And so I was like, oh, that's like me. I like to do all these different things. Uh -huh. so, I considered the naturopathic program and um, and I remember a friend asked me what what do you where do you what do you vision for yourself afterwards like what are you doing and when I like envisioned the white coat I was like no like in labs I was like that's just like I want to touch people and I want to yeah like reach back into this traditional healing that feels more like me so that's how I got there.
Beautiful. Yeah, I, I also considered the Chinese medicine program or rather doing them together, doing the dual program. And then after a few months, I realized really clearly, I just wanted to get the heck out of school as quickly as possible. So <laughs> <And> real. <laughs> but, uh, but now you're still in school. You're finishing up a master's in integrative mental health, it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to just share briefly like what that looks like, what that feels like and how that informs your practice? Oh my gosh, Ben, it's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so awesome. It's basically a four-year master's program for um, current naturopathic or classical Chinese medicine students. And it's founded on a psychotherapeutic modality called Hakomi, which is mindfulness-based. And so it's all about um, coming back into the present moment experience in our bodies in order to start to shift some patterns that might be there. And I absolutely, like, it forms a foundation of the work that I do. And so, yeah, the work I do is really um, holistic in the sense that I do a lot of work around emotions and energy, and all of it starts at the body, at the interface of the body. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So I've heard the term Hakomi before, but I don't really know, is that a person? Is that someone's name uh, who created that? Do you know much about the foundation of where it comes from? Or Yeah, the person who created it, he actually had a dream that this modality was called Hakomi. And the word, he didn't know what it meant. It was just like sounds that came to him. And later he learned that, I believe in the Navajo Oh, I'm going to get this wrong. I, maybe in the Hopi language, it means where you stand in relationship to everything else. And it's kind of funny. Huh. Like, he so didn't. Like, the, just the sound, the sound came to him. And then he kind of tried to figure out is this sound like a word? Is it, if it is, in what language? And he figured out the. the Somehow he figured out it meant that. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And really, um, if I'm understanding properly, accurately, it's, it's really about just being present with feelings, emotions, symptoms, pain, mm -hmm. all of that. Exactly. And yeah. so, yeah. And so what that might look like is, you know, if somebody's coming in and they have pelvic pain, for example, mm -hmm. you know, I might guide them into mindfulness. So it feels a little bit like meditation where they get to go towards the pain. And, it's, and it becomes almost like walking in a dream land together, like a dreamscape of the body where metaphor emerges. There's sometimes symbols that live in our bodies. And um, I'm really learning that our bodies speak in a different language than our minds. So it's pretty, pretty amazing, yeah. The way I feel is that our bodies speak in symptoms and sensations and our mind speaks in thoughts and feelings which or how, how would you yeah. uh, expand upon that totally no I love that yeah. and I think yeah we we have like a certain language in our brains and the bot and our bodies have a different language like symptoms and sensation and um, and I guess when I talk about this imagery it's because through mindfulness we're able to I like to kind of show people like you know if our bodies if we have if our conscious awareness is the tip of the iceberg here then everything that's underneath that is like is our subconscious and so we're walking around doing what we do and we might not we might be like why do i keep getting into these relationships that don't work or the same kind of relationship or why do i why can't i just you know eat like more vegetables every day or stick to this like self-care routine why am i like sabotaging this for myself and there might be a story here but until we kind of dip into that more subconscious terrain there's not often a lot of change that happens and so through the mindfulness work we're able to um to really get underneath some of the the thought patterns of what's happening into some of the deeper layers of why that could be happening and how it shows up in the body. So mm -hmm. it's somatic yeah. work. It's really cool. Have you ever yes. experienced anything like that? For sure I have. And it is powerful because I think that, you know, in kind of, we'll call it 
conventional alternative medicine or naturopathic medicine or functional medicine or maybe even Chinese medicine, we're really focusing on the tip of the iceberg. We're, we're focusing on the physical world reality, what we see, what we feel, how we feel it, and we're trying to find the solution to our problems by staying at the tip of the iceberg and not maybe acknowledging, or maybe we do acknowledge that there's more to it, but it's like, how do you drill through the ice, you know, and get beneath the surface to provide some holistic care to our maybe subconscious or unconscious or less than conscious awareness? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And, you know, that can happen in any sort of um, healing or natural medicine or medicine period context, right? Yeah. 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 It's like, why isn't this person, they're still smoking or, yeah, we're not going to really get at it from that level. So if I'm understanding correctly, the Hakomi work and probably so many other tools and, and practices can support people, individuals in accessing the below the surface, beneath the tip of the iceberg kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Do you have, yeah, it could, do you want to talk a little bit more and share a little bit more about how that happens, how we're, we gain insight into what's going on beneath the surface? Yeah, That's like a big I would topic love to. Question. I mean, I can think of a few, you know, general examples of things that can happen. Yeah, and why people come. One thing that just right away comes to mind is, you know, having somebody that has an area of their body, let's say, like their abdomen, it's like they're having a lot of gut pain. They've gone in, they've done the SIBO testing, they've done all the lab work, they've been seeing a Chinese medicine practitioner, and they're like doing all the right things, or, mm-hmm. um, and yet they're still feeling like this, this pain, this unexplained pain. And so in mindfulness, we might start to, um, I always give people an option. Sometimes we leave it wide open where it's like we're, you know, letting the body lead us. And sometimes we go right into the physical place. (laughs) Sorry, cat. And so, um, you know, they have this gut pain and I might, we might do a mindfulness immersion and it might start to show up that, wow, like, there is this really deep um, hunger for connection and for being held. And I've not really ever had intimacy in my life Mm. and I don't know how to ask for it. And actually my parents weren't able to really like give that, you know, and um, there might be, you know, this whole kind of thread that emerges and then I might be like, okay, is it okay if I hold your stomach and we'll, in my still in mindfulness be like how is this Mm -hmm. and just kind of keep tracking and following what happens moment to moment and huge things shift Mm -hmm. then it's like blows my mind it's almost like seems mystical and yet Mm -hmm. it's truly the term of somatic that we're not just our minds we're not just our bodies or emotions we're really like all of it Mm -hmm. so yeah, so that's one small example. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. And when you talk about a mindful immersion, I think that was the the term that you used. Could you maybe just elaborate for somebody who might not have ha- ever had a mindful immersion or um, who might not be aware of what that could possibly be? Like, what does that look like or feel like? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can do, we, uh, we could do a little demo if you want. Sure, why not? A little, <laughs> I'm open, why, why not? Yeah, and when I say mindfulness, yeah, it's just paying attention to our present moment experiences. And yeah. so as we do this little, just like, yeah, 30 second immersion experience, people get to feel for themselves. Um, I often say this work is experiential, like I can talk for about sure. it, but we really need yeah. to experience it so let's experience it if you're open yeah why not let's yeah. do it a yeah. mindful i mean is that is that what you kind of call it a mindful immersion mm-hmm. yeah yeah i love that yeah. yeah yeah let's let's try it out and so cool. for people listening and for you you can go ahead and just take a comfortable seat <clears throat> you're welcome to lie down or stay seated and go ahead and just let your eyes 
either close or have a soft gaze at the floor. You might start by just starting to bring your awareness to yourself. And I like to imagine this like a boat on water that's been going out into the world. And right now we're just calling that boat back to ourselves. So even noticing what it's like to start to turn your attention towards your own experience. If there's any resistance, maybe relief, just letting that be there. And as you come towards your own experience, just notice what's lighting up for you right now. Maybe there's a part of your body that has a certain sensation or energetic quality. Maybe there's an emotion, a thought, or a memory. Whatever's happening right now for you, I'm just gonna let that be here. I'd like you to go ahead and just staying curious about your experience right now in this moment. Go ahead and ask your body where it would like to receive some touch. part of your body that could use a little tenderness or support. You might even bring some breath into that area of your body. Noticing what qualities show up here. If they have a temperature, shape, image, sensation. And then you can go ahead and ask this area of your body if it would be okay receiving your touch. And if it says yes, go ahead and just place a hand there. And we're just going to spend a few moments here noticing what it's like to have a, a need for support and then receiving that support right now in this moment. Noticing if your breath has shifted. Your inner ex experience has shifted. And we'll just take a few more breaths right here into this place where your hand is meeting this part of yourself. Knowing that you can return here in any moment. So when you're ready, just slowly starting to bring your awareness back to other parts of your body, to the room. Yeah, making any movements that feel good. And then in your own time, you can open your eyes. <clears throat> I could use a lot more of that. <laughs> <laughs> How was that for you, Ben? Well, it, I mean, so familiar, you know, so familiar and also so special at the same time, you know, such an ordinary, mundane, basic, simple thing that I have done before for sure, but I certainly don't do as much as I possibly could. 
Mm-hmm. And I think we're all in probably in that same position with our self-care and self-love and self-nurturance. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah but it's, I mean, I really loved the really just deep inquiry into the, like the body's sensations and desires and what I personally can struggle with and I trust I'm not alone is you know when I ask that question like where or when, when you ask the question where where in the body is uh needing my support my love my touch there's like so like so much goes on you know like me 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 no here no here back shoulders knees hips like like it's like all, all of it <laughs> <laughs> and I, I realized, you know, I, I first it was like my like right in the center of my back. I'm like, I want to touch myself there. And I was like, uh, but I can't like really right now. And I was like, and I've got this like really t- kind of tingly sensation like around where my liver is. Maybe I'll just do that. And it's like, but my liver is like, <laughs> oh, hey there. <laughs> liver, anger. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my liver is, you know, it what's the point of putting my hand on my liver? Like, what's that going to do? And then my knee, and then I was like, oh, well, I kind of took a little wipe out this morning on my mountain bike. Maybe I should put my hand on my knee. <laughs> so anyways, that was just like a, a, a small sampling of the inner experience and thought process that was triggered. You know what? But, but my overall takeaway is like, you know, there's of course no wrong answer. It's just, it's just honoring that, time and space to provide some attention really because I mean would you agree that it's more than like placing of the hands on a certain part of the body it's it's really the mindful attention and the slowing down in the space more than the physical touch the physical touch though is so yes and the physical (laughs) touch because because yeah part of this work you know i often say to clients um and i use the word clients and patients interchangeably sometimes because i work with people distance as clients but um but really going towards both you know so it's so common to go towards a wound and to go towards a pathology and to go towards what doesn't feel good and what's not working, that, um, that I'm always stepping with my clients in, in the direction of pleasure and in the direction of their wounding. And part of going towards pleasure is, is finding ways that we can self-resource. And so oftentimes when I do that as a little exercise, maybe when somebody's, when we're starting a session together, um, it's a way for them to to feel like, oh, I have all the tools. I don't need to go out and buy some fancy thing or, you know, spend all this time or money. Like, I have my hands. I have my own awareness, my breath, and I get to meet whatever place in myself with the tenderness. Um, and that can feel really good and calming yeah. and grounding. Yeah, and so yeah, always think- looking for... For the solid ground as much as also going towards what feels uncomfortable. Yeah, thanks for reminding me of the importance and power of hand and hands and touch. Because you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's just like they're they're just to get things done, you know, these hands of ours. But really they are they're the extension of our, you know, compassion and love and heart and and they do hold healing energy. Yeah. Especially when we acknowledge and embrace that fact. Yes, 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 yes. I like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, you know, Chinese medicine are this um, point here, Lao Gong, is considered a really important chi. And that's the mission. center of the palm for listeners, like, yeah. like right in the center. Yep, right in yep. the center of the palm. And so, um, you know, and then we hear about the laying of hands. Um, And there's a really cool TED talk by a Western medical doctor who talks about how with all the fancy inventions, we can never replace human touch. Mm. Um, So yeah, I think something so fundamental as our hands is powerful. And unfortunately, I think that a lot of uh, technologies are taking us away from that in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Certainly telemedicine. And it's hard, it's hard to replace the, you know, hard to integrate touch over the computer screen. 
Um, but but we can ask case, people yeah. to do it with themselves. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. It's so true, just like how you guided us. Um, great point. And I think that is like a great takeaway practice. Um, and maybe a good opportunity to, to shift into some of your other tools in your toolbox that involve your hands, um, in addition to placing needles. Um, and you also are a massage therapist. I think that was like kind of one thing from way back when. I, I, I don't know if you still do that. Um, but you also do abdominal massage mm -hmm. and I know holistic pelvic care as well. So a lot of hands-on work mm -hmm. that you practice with your clients and patients. Um, so I actually had Susanna on a couple months back talking to me about holistic pelvic care because she's trained and honestly, I, I knew she was trained and I kind of knew what it was, but um, it wasn't until I had that conversation with her where I got a deeper understanding of really how, how broadly it can benefit so many people, you know, regardless of their symptoms, really. Um, but one thing that I don't know that much about is the abdominal massage technique that you have trained in and, and practice. So what's that all about? Yeah, I've actually trained in three different abdominal massage techniques. That's um, good because I, I was gonna I was gonna say Mayan, but I was like, I don't know if it's just Mayan. So so yeah, what what are the different yeah. abdominal massage techniques? So I've trained in the excuse me. <clears throat> I've trained in the Arvigo techniques of Maya abdominal therapy, which is based out of um, Central American traditional healing through abdominal massage, basically, um, predominantly for womb healing, but also for gut healing. And then also something called qi sang, which um, translates to the qi of the inner yin organs. And so our, um, yeah, organ, basically Chinese organ massage. And that really brings in the Chinese medical theory into abdominal massage. And then I've also done the um, visceral manipulation um, training. So the more kind of like mechanical, it sounds like. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, a little bit more like, yeah, definitely more mechanical, more Western focused, but also with an emphasis on listening through your hands and doing like kind of more gentle fascial work around the organs. Mm -hmm. And so I do work with people's organs. Um, and yeah, I've been doing that for, it's been four years. So I started in my, in the second year of our schooling together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those are the modalities that, that I've studied. What, do you, what else do you want to know? I want to know a lot. <laughs> um, but I, I, first I want to, I'm assuming that all of these modalities are distinct, of course, but probably share a lot of commonalities. And so when someone comes and um, do you think that an abdominal, some abdominal work would be beneficial? Do you say, oh, the uh, Maya abdominal massage would be good for this person? Oh, the visceral manipulation, or I'm sure you kind of blend and weave it all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's become kind of a a mush. <laughs> the Jeevan <laughs> method. The Jeevan method. It's all gone into the pot and <laughs> it has a different flavor for each person. And, you know, I've definitely experimented with doing purely like one technique, um, purely another technique and just kind of seeing over the years like what works. And it's really different for each person. Um, I would say that predominantly I will start with the Maya abdominal massage because it's just it's the first one that I studied it's the one I've studied most in depth um, and it's the one that I've just seen really incredible benefits from but the way that I weave in the other two the chinate sang and the visceral manipulation is kind of taking pieces of those and then like kind of uh, inviting them in to the Maya abdominal massage, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah. So maybe share why somebody might benefit or like what, what conditions, I think you, you talked about some womb, pelvic related things mm -hmm. and some gastrointestinal things, any specific conditions that 
um, you've had, you've seen and witnessed success and healing with? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So many. (laughs) Yeah. So So many. It's like, it's like, I'm like continually humbled and, um, I don't know. It's sometimes it's like magical to me, the, the shifts that I've seen happened from, um, from just doing hands-on work. And so some of those conditions, you know, I've had folks, and I want to say, you know, some of these stories sound miraculous and not everybody has like overnight um, shifts. Yeah. And I think with, with anything, with any kind of holistic healing story, there's so many pieces to the puzzle and massage is one of them, but it's not, and maybe it is kind of the one that kind of things click but it's not the only piece of the puzzle. Yeah, totally. And let me say this, a lot of the conditions that people come to see me for are based, are rooted in some sort of stagnation, some sort of pelvic or abdominal congestion, meaning that flow is not happening in the way that it should in this area. That could be from a variety of reasons, um, including emotional and energetic. And so once we get flow and circulation going here, the body is wise and often is able to balance itself. And so, um, so yeah, so, endo, so I've had folks with endometriosis who have come in and after a few sessions no longer experience any symptoms or any known, I mean, it's hard to tell if somebody has endometriosis and until they're actually looking for that tissue um, through surgery. And so, um, but yeah, no longer having the symptomology of endometriosis and even getting pregnant. Um, I've had folks come in for unexplained infertility and they're like, yeah, I don't know. And then get pregnant after one session. Um, I've had people, a lot of people come to see me for menstrual pain. I would say like nine out of 10 people show a significant um, improvement in their menses each month and not just in the pain factor, but also having like a more smooth um, menstrual cycle overall and the emotional um, symptoms that can sometimes come. There have been um, some folks with, there's a lot of mystery stuff that shows up in my room of like, I'm having really intense stomach pain and I don't like I've done the tests and I don't know why and after a few sessions usually three to six sessions showing like it just resolves and we don't know why right Um, and sometimes I can feel things in people's abdomens or in their pelvic bowls and so we will you know work to move any sort of blockages but um but yeah, those are just a few examples of Great. what comes in. Yeah, really powerful. So you talked about stagnation. And th- could you talk a- share a little bit more about like what that means from your perspective? It sounds like a stagnation of blood flow, but maybe that's not all we're talking about. Maybe, is it also potentially like another thought around stagnation could be like constipation or like, you know, stagnated bowel energy bowel movements um but but yeah what what else how else does stagnation kind of manifest yeah that's a really good question ben and and this is where i pull in the chinese medicine theory um and so if somebody is constipated they there's a variety of reasons why that might be happening but one of them is not having enough energy enough chi to move the bowels and so um and so if we have a deficiency, just like if you think about water, and if there is, if the river is, you know, there's a drought, then the water becomes less and less and less, and then it may start to kind of pool and stagnate in these areas. Mm-hmm. Um, stagnation can also look like blockage upstream of chi or blood or food. A dam. A dam. <laughs> yeah, and that can be even like food, like eating, you know, too much and feeling like ah and then that kind of throwing things off um cold is another thing that can kind of that can stagnate things just thinking about the way uh, that water can congeals when there's too much cold and so yeah we're looking at a few different factors behind 
um, what could what could stagnate, and that's both physical and energetic. For sure, I imagine. Uh, what's your experience with um, like sedent people who are sedentary and just aren't moving enough? That seems like a big thing that maybe a lot of people are dealing with in our current lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I feel it, right? Being in school <laughs> yeah. for so many years and driving and even right now as we're sitting, it's like, where is the flow getting cut off? Yeah. And our groin and we have all the, the our lymph nodes there, right? So I think about like the these fluids too, our lymph and our blood. And, um, yeah. and so I think so much of the stagnation and congestion is from being in a modern sitting culture. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So um, abdominal massage is all about getting things moving physically and energetically. It sounds like blood flow and energy and chi and all the stuff. And I really love how kind of, it seems, I'm sure it's, there's a lot of nuance and technique and, and skill, but it also seems very simple, simplistic in the sense that really the intention is just bringing blood flow, bringing energy to an area. And I really just love how we can trust that where blood is flowing, our body is going to heal. We don't have to tell the blood to flow a certain way or tell the energy to move in some certain way. We just have to tell it to go there and it knows how to heal. Yes, I agree 100%. It's like we, yes, I think that's totally the, you know, one of the big differences, right? Between like um, Western allopathic medicine and more natural medicine is like trusting in the body's ability to heal and that we don't have to try to do it for the body. Right. Yeah, totally. Cool. So, so you brought up some, you know, related to the abdominal work that you, that you perform, you brought up some, you know, pelvic conditions like endometriosis and infertility and menstrual pain and things like that. And after talking with Susanna about holistic pelvic care, um, you know, these are things that that modality can also support. So when do you kind of choose where to go and how to go with somebody in their holistic treatment, hands-on treatment with their pelvic issues? Yeah, that's such a good question. And this is where it kind of goes back to that somatic piece of really taking in like where people are at in their, in relationship to their own body and their own healing. And so, um, you know, I've had folks who've had pelvic pain and we've spent, you know, sessions leading up to actually doing the hands-on work. Um, by actually like securing that they can stay in their bodies and that their nervous systems can be regulated while we're doing that work. And so it's really, really so, I love this work so much because it's so different for each person. Um, and usually people have a really strong idea of what they want to work on when they, when they come to me. So it's very collaborative. Awesome. Yes, I think that um, the body doesn't lie. You know, the body doesn't lie. So when we learn to interpret those messages and trust those messages, where, you know, it's like we've got the golden ticket to our health and wellness. We are, we become our own healer when we are able to listen to our body and be guided by that wisdom. Yes, uh, I love that. Yeah, so, so powerful and empowering. Um, so for listeners who do want to learn more about holistic pelvic care, the interview that I did with Dr. Susanna was number 82. So, if, you know, just plug in that one. It was a good one. Um, but anyways, just kind of wrapping things up here, I'd love to offer listeners kind of, you know, some beyond what you already guided us in terms of like some hand, the hands-on self-nurturance or what you called it a mindful immersion, which I really love. Um, what like what do you think our society our culture is uh deficient in or and could use a, a good dose of sometimes i like to ask the question like if, if you were able to encapsulate something and give it to everybody or like put something in the water supply and a lot of you know for naturopathic doctors and functional medicine doctors you know like, could be a vitamin or, or a nutrient or an herb or something like that but but um you know, what do you think that our world needs more of in, especially for us who are seeking 
more health and well-being and energy and vitality? I love that question. That's such a good question. And um, two things came to mind, but, but I think that they're connected. The first thing that came to mind was self-friendship. And the second thing that came to mind was embodiment. And I think that when we are embodied, we are in friendship with ourselves, with our communities, um, and with nature. Uh, and that part of embodiment is also remembering where we come from, that we're not just these isolated beings on the planet, that we're part of this whole system. And then we begin to live in ways that is honoring um, this relationship to the rest of the world, to each other. Well, you went ahead and triggered so many more questions that I had and topics to dive into, but you know, just briefly, um, the term embodiment, I think a lot of people use that. And I mean, it's like on some level, it's like, yeah, we're all embodied. And so what, like, what, so, you know, how do I become more embodied? You know, it's like, we're physical beings, right? Or we're, you know, spiritual beings that having this physical experience, there's no way out of it. So how, how do people embrace their embodiment or become more embodied or connected with their bodies. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And I think that actually, so yes, we are walking around in these physical forms and yet so many of us are, you know, day to day, just living from the neck up and, yeah. you know, living in this time of like massive, um, consumption of, you know, through our eyeballs of the media and of all and driving and all these things that we are, you know, not always actually in our, in our body's present moment experience. And that's why people can sometimes get really sick and not even know that they were sick because they, they were like, oh, I didn't even really realize that that pain yeah. or that they're lump. Kinda, of or they're just powering through. It's exactly. Like, it's just a little thing. And like, yeah. or it could be a subconscious, like, yeah, like they don't even realize it. Absolutely. Both. They might minimize it. I mean, how many times do people have to pee and they're like, I'll just hold off, you know, and That's hold me. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, I'm almost peeing my pants, you know. <laughs> like, exactly. oh, I didn't realize I had to pee. <laughs> exactly. So it's like a perfect, really like relatable example. Yeah. Um, or, you know, when we're driving and getting our thoughts, I'm always amazed, like, how did I get to where I'm going? And I was just like thinking the whole time and not even really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah wait where am i <laughs> totally you're yeah. like oh somehow yeah. i'm on auto yeah yeah we've all had that experience and fortunately enough we're here to tell the story yeah exactly and our bodies yeah luckily like some piece of us is present but um but yeah i would encourage people to really if you're curious you know look for folks look for practitioners look for groups or somebody to um to help to help you learn what that can look like for you um, in terms of becoming more embodied. And, um, you know, that's work that I do all the time with people. I have a class called Body Oracle, which is all about finding your inner yes and inner no in your body and then being able to make decisions from that place by actually listening to um, your body, which a lot of folks, yeah, have never learned and might not know how to do. Hmm. Beautiful. Body Oracle. I love that. Is it an online offering? It is an online offering. All right. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, well, I guess we can dive into where people can learn more information about you and Body Oracle and everything else that Jeevan is up to these days. Yeah, totally. So I have an in-person practice in Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. um, and I see folks one-on-one -on -one in my practice. I call it somatic pelvic healing. And so if this, but I also work with people in embodiment work um, and abdominal healing. And then I do, right now I have a few online courses. One is a body oracle course, which is kind of an intro to embodiment um, practices. And then another one is called embodied steaming. And it is all about um, working with 
vaginal steaming or um, herbal pelvic steaming for both. I, I wanted, to, I wanted yeah. to talk to you about that. I forgot. Yeah, we'll have to have Anyways, another. Yeah, I we'll have to, I, <laughs> when, when our class launches, so I'll, yeah, I'll totally share that information. But it's so, yeah, it's so amazing in the way that I approach um, vaginal steaming is not just as a physical practice, but also as a tool of embodiment and connecting to our roots. And so that class will be launched here in the next month or month and a half. And, um, and then I'm working on some kind of extra special online offerings. And yeah, we'll see. That'll be, that's like percolating right now. And cool. So where can people go? Did you share the website? Yeah, no, I didn't was I right not, now. Was I not embodied? <laughs> <laughs> you were so embodied, you didn't ca yeah, that you caught that I didn't share it. So okay. my website is flowerhandwellness.com, all okay. singular. And then my Instagram is at flowerhandwellness. And that will all be changing to my name in the next few months, Jeevan Singh. And so probably easier to... Um, well, I guess if folks are listening, I can, well, I don't have to spell that out because I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> they'll find you. If people, when, yeah. if people want to find you, they'll find you. And people, exactly. I'm sure, do want to find you because you're awesome. And uh, I've so appreciated this conversation that has truly traversed so many rich and important and meaningful things that I'm so glad that you are doing and bringing into the world. Thank you so much, Ben, and thank you for helping to just, yeah, empower people with all the amazing knowledge that you and Susanna have. Yeah, well, you're, you're part of it as well, and I'm so fortunate and grateful to connect and, and empower people through sharing your knowledge and wisdom that is so far beyond me, so I'm so glad that you have uh, taken the dive into all of the things that you have, and um, you really have, it's like you've got 29,000 arms and hands and different facets of health and healing and living and, and they're all you know have their they're all like in buckets of gold you know and you have so you have so much to share I guess that's what I'm trying to say thank you so much it makes yeah. sense coming from yeah in Indian deities have many arms maybe my ancestors are like put your arms in many things thank you so yeah. much Ben I really enjoyed this yeah, it has been wonderful. So um, listeners, go and check out Flower Hand Wellness and, and uh, soon to be jeevansing.com. And thank you, Jeevan. And peace and love. And I'll see you guys, catch you guys next time. <laughs>